Uh, today we have a special guest here in the studio. Uh, he is uh, Matteo Mekachi. He is the president of International Campaign for Tibet, which is based in Washington, D.C. And he has taken over the charge of uh, uh, International Cam Campaign for Tibet in 2013, December. So I will really would like to welcome you here Thank in you. the studio. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, you are well known for a defender, defender of the human rights, and also you are very close to His Holiness the Dalai Lama. And I guess you have a, a past record of working for the human rights, yeah. and also you know working in the international level against the torture. So uh, whenever you know any individual start coming in contact with the Tibet issue. So they do have an individual story how they come in contact with the Tibetan. Yeah. So what is that uh, the story that uh, led you to take so much interest on Tibet? Yeah. No. Thank you for having me today. And uh, I mean, it's a long story. I'll try to make it short. But sure, I, sure. I started as a young activist working mm. for human rights, and I remember it was uh, 1992 in Florence, my mm -hmm. uh, c the city where I was born in Italy. I remember I was doing a, um, one demonstration about some human rights, you know, situation or political situation in Italy, and I remember looking in the streets some Tibetan monks mm -hmm. giving out leaflets. So I took one of those leaflets and I, you know, learned about some political prisoners in Tibet. So that was my first uh, mm -hmm. contact with the issue. Then I moved on and I've been working. Uh, uh, I took my degree in international law and decided to focus on human rights. And my group, had already, the Radical Party in Italy, had been uh, a staunch supporter of Tibetan rights in Italy for a long time. Mm -hmm. So the connection there was quite natural. Uh, I moved to New York uh, to work for this organization for several years, and I've been in touch also with some Tibetans, but not really working on the issue. Mm -hmm. And it just happened in 2007, in December, I went to Dharamsala mm -hmm. with some of my colleagues. And I was able to meet with the Dalai Lama in person. And uh, so that was my first uh, uh, connection with him. Mm -hmm. uh, and I decided to go back to Dharamsala in March 2008 mm -hmm. uh, because I had heard that there was some kind of mobilization leading up to the Olympic Games. Right. Mm -hmm. And when I was there on March 14th, 2008, the mm -hmm. demonstrations in right. Tibet mm -hmm. started. So basically, I remained there for another two weeks. And I got to know many people, the current speaker of the parliament, Pempa Sering, the previous speaker, Karma Chofel, mm -hmm. Adol Maghiari, and others. And so a um, few weeks after, I came back to Italy and I was elected to the Italian parliament. Oh, okay. So from then on, my Tibetan friends asked me to help. And when uh, you know the Tibetans ask you to help, you turn around and there are not many other mm -hmm. people willing to do it. So I decided to take it on. And from then, I started to work okay. more. So you have a wonderful background, wonderful story. Thank you. So now the organization that you are heading is the International yes. Campaign, for Tibet, uh, campaign for Tibet. Yeah. Now this, the mandate goal of International Campaign for Tibet is to promote yeah. the human rights, the democracy, and also you know promote the dialogue between yeah. His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama and China, yeah. which is a big, big issue. Sure. So. How do you uh, intend or plan to achieve these, uh, you know, the quarter, you know, really is yeah. big, big goals? I mean, this is a, a it's a difficult task, uh, uh, but it's a necessary one. And not just for Tibetans. I think that this issue is important for the entire world uh, because the relations of our governments, and we are talking the international campaign for Tibet support Tibetans, but the biggest part of our supporters are non-Tibetans. We have also many Tibetans and we would like to have more. Um, even among our supporters, and there is, you know, a, a, an important part of them and also of our staff mm -hmm. is Tibetan, but mostly are citizens of the United States, the Netherlands, Germany, uh, Belgium, where we are present with our mm -hmm. offices and also in other countries that support our mandate. Mm -hmm. What they're asking is to our governments mm -hmm. to support, you know, Tibetan freedoms and democratic rights. Mm -hmm. And by doing so, you can only do it while relating to China. Mm -hmm. And the relations of these countries with China are becoming every year more and more important because the role of China over the last decade has changed dr dramatically mm -hmm. all over the world. Its economic and military power has increased. So uh, for us, it's even more important to mobilize public opinion, mm -hmm. to remind our governments that in dealing with China, we cannot forget 
about the future of the human rights and democracy in that country mm -hmm. because if China doesn't move towards that direction, that will be a danger also for our societies. Mm -hmm. And I think many people have started to realize that, not only in the West, but also in Asia, mm -hmm. in other countries where they are not very comfortable in which, uh, the way in which you know, China mm -hmm. behaves. So uh, uh, apparently it's a, you know, it's a very, very difficult goal, mm -hmm. but we have a very uh, clear mandate that we stand for values mm -hmm. that are shared by the majority of the people All in right, the world. Right, right. And I believe also in China All right. they share these values. Mm -hmm. Now among these goals, one of the most difficult goals is uh, you know, a plan or you know, promote a negotiation or dialogue <coughs> between the 14 Dalai Lama and uh, uh, Chinese uh, the leadership. Yes. Now in the past, of course, we had those o occasions and now it has become kind of static, you know, we don't hear much for yeah. a long time. So how do you plan to wake up this, uh, you know, stalemate yes. kind of a situation? Uh, I, I mean, at ICT, we, uh, we promote the vision of His Holiness, uh, you know, regarding the situation in Tibet, but also his overall vision about the world and humanity. And we believe that his message it's important not just for Tibetans, but also for the future mm -hmm. of Chinese society. Um, so we believe that he's also creating an opportunity and a space uh, for, the Tibetan, for the Chinese leadership mm -hmm. to try to find a solution to the Tibetan issue. Unfortunately, in Beijing, the positions that are now prevalent are of a nationalistic nature. Mm -hmm. And so they try to base their power on strengthening this mm -hmm. sense of national belonging and the so-called China dream. And this is not offering a space to implement uh, the, you know, the, the autonomy and the mm -hmm. basic rights of the Tibetan people. So for us, the internationalization of the issue, mm -hmm. uh, having more governments coordinating among themselves, which is not now happening, right. uh, a, in talking to China with the same voice mm -hmm. on Tibet, and asking the resumption of dialogue and the mm -hmm. opening of Tibet, for example, to international institutions mm -hmm. or independent NGOs and journalists mm -hmm. and diplomats, it's very important. So mm -hmm. it's a strategy that tries to engage China through our governments mm -hmm. to make sure that they don't go the wrong direction again right, on right. Tibet. Now, even today also, we have a story about, uh, you know, the Tibetan NGOs are trying to talk or trying to campaign to the International the Olympic Committee yeah. that China should not be allowed to host no. the Winter Olympics in 2022 or something. Yeah. Now in 2008, we had a, a big opportunity mm -hmm. in which we could, what we are talking about is the, the dialogue. And then at that time, it is presumed that, you know, we have a upper leverage in the sense that, you know, the Tibetan people inside Tibet, the rows of every part of Tibet, yeah. quite different the 1959 yeah. and quite different from 1989 or those you know incidents yeah. so do you have any feeling that you know in 2008 uh, we missed some opportunities i think the opportunity was missed by the governments um, in the west um, around those days actually there was an important meeting between the Dalai Lama and President Sarkozy who was mm -hmm. the president of the European Union mm -hmm. and the Chinese uh, uh, reacted very angrily to that meeting and at that point the European Union failed to come up with a joint position to mm -hmm. say that it's not up to China to decide who they are going to meet because mm -hmm. what is happening is that China is interfering mm -hmm. in the decision-making process of our governments mm -hmm. contrary to what they say that mm -hmm. are these governments that are interfering in China's affairs. Mm -hmm. So at that time, the opportunity was missed, definitely because there was no coordination mm -hmm. of, of position. But at the same time, I believe that for the future, we have to look at the people inside Tibet. Mm -hmm. But we have to look at also the people inside China. All right, right. Because uh, uh, I firmly believe that even the Chinese people are not happy with the kind of government mm -hmm. they have today. They know about the corruption. Mm -hmm. Uh, they know about the lack of freedom, right, they right. know that about the lack of communication, mm -hmm. they cannot use Facebook, Twitter mm -hmm. and other means. So I think they will be also more, they will right. become also more mm -hmm. um, demanding mm -hmm. to their authorities. Now taking a clue from your answer, 
on the, you know, we should think about the Tibetans inside Tibet. Yeah. Now we keep on having the stories about the cell emulations. Yes. Now we are talking about, you know, the, we have counted 137 who are cell yes. emulated. So what do you think like this? Is something it's really making some impact or it does not? Or it should go on or it should stop? Well, it is not really for me or anybody else to comment on, you know, any individual decision to, mm -hmm. to make, uh, you know, such, uh, such an action, which is, you know, very sad because when someone loses their life, mm -hmm. um, this is very, you know, very sad for everybody. At the same time, we have to respect that decision because these are people who have decided to take a political mm -hmm. stance and the political decisions because what we know is that almost all of them uh, while doing this self-immolation, they have also made political requests, which mm -hmm. is more freedom in Tibet and the return of the Dalai Lama. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, the reaction of the international community is not there to these actions. So, uh, but we cannot really uh, exclude that this is not having an impact mm -hmm. because also the reaction that the Chinese government is having, which is to criminalize the self-immolation mm -hmm. and putting in jail the relatives and the friends of those who self-immolate, mm -hmm clearly shows that they are also uh, scared mm -hmm. by this kind, uh, uh, this kind of action. So right. I think, you know, mm -hmm. uh, definitely what is remarkable is that with this action that have taken the life of these, pe these people, they have never hurt one Chinese person right, or even right. a Chinese business. Right. This, uh, I think, should be respected okay. by the international I community. just have the last question. Here. Sure. Now you are going through, you are, you are means not uh, you as a person, but uh, International Campaign for yeah. Tibet is going a transition in their leadership. Yes. So the other day we had, you know, the reception for Lodi Gary, yes. who had been working in an International Campaign for a very long. Yes. So he held the position of the executive chairman. Yes. So how you are handling this transition in the leadership of ICT? Yes. I mean, this is a, an important time for ICT and the decision also for ICT to, to have as president someone coming from Europe and with a political background it clearly indi indicates from the board the decision to try to internationalize mm -hmm. this movement. So uh, because we see that China is playing a major role internationally. So this is our attempt. Uh, it, it's a difficult task, uh, but we feel that this is necessary and feasible. And so our scope uh, is to build on also on the strength that people like Lodi Ghiari have been able to build uh, here in the United States and in other countries and to bring it to, to a different level in which we can have a larger portion of public opinions all over the world that can influence their own governments in taking the right, right stance vis-a-vis -vis Tibet and China. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you so much for your opportunity and for this enlightening answer that you gave. <laughs> so this was a wonderful, I'm sure we can have other occasion where we can go a little more detail on those things. My questions were appointed yes. and uh, I know you have much more to say and uh, spell out, but you know, just because of time, we have to stop here. So I would <laughs> like to thank uh, all those uh, who watch for watching this uh, interview with uh, the president of International Campaign for Tibet. I'm sure we'll have other occasions to do this kind of wonderful interview. Thank you so much. Thank you.